Good afternoon, MML. It's Bernie Buffon again here, and this is your Road to the Playoffs. Um, is it recap? Precap? What do you want to call it? Um, for DW slash NSC, um, where we're going to have a look at which two teams we think will make the playoffs, and any team what might get the dreaded uh, relegation. Um, I'm trying to remember who I went for, <laughs> to be honest. I remember saying Undead But West will finish top, I do believe. And I don't know if I went for the Nordic Pagans to finish second. I think that I think that sounds about right, I think. That's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> Let's have a look at how it is. Ooh, there's still one game to go this week as well. The Nordic Pagans versus Call for Nordlands. But let's have a look at the leaderboard. No surprise to me to see Undead but West are top. Um, with 11 points, 1-3, drawn 2, lost none. Um, Alma Forever doing wonders with uh, Dark Elves as always. Back in there in second place with 10 points. Um, and then Necrophilia and Chaps both and uh, with the same record of 1-2, drawn 2, lost 1. They're on 8 points. Now the Noted Pagans can get themselves a massive boost if they win their game. Um, what's outstanding. Because at the moment they are on 7 points. But if they won, obviously they'd go into 10 points. What would be the same as um, Alma Forever's Blood of Amber. So this game's huge for them. Um, and like I say, they're going to play for Colour for Nordlands. Who's just come from the, um, the challenge. Um after having an amazing start and they've won the first four games there so that made when um, Doomfrog's Kislev dropped out I think um, you know that's basically a uh, reward for him so um, he did really well in the ch he really did really well in the challenge and hopefully uh, he'll do well in the pros because uh, he is a very good coach at gym so I, I can't wait to see what happens in that game that's going to be a tough game for the Nordic Pagans anyway so to my knowledge, I went for uh, Teddy Tom's um, Camry, and obviously I went for Murray's Wood Elves. Do I still believe both them teams will make the playoffs? Well, let's have a look and look at all the teams. So we start off with Undead But Worse, who dodged a bullet this week. Um, there was in all sorts of trouble against um, the Beastie Boys, but as always, Teddy Tom showed his class, doesn't panic, turned a 1 0 deficit and 1 2 1. He's such a good coach. Um, he's got Cult of the Nordlands next week, so that's that that that's going to be great. You know, Camry versus Undead, and his team's name's called Undead, but worse. I can't wait to see that one. Um, and then the last game is a bit tricky as well because it's against Blood of Amber, who obviously at the moment are a Dark Elf team sitting second. So it's gonna it's gonna be a tricky one. Um, both them games are going to be very very tough. So making the playoffs to me isn't a gimme he's in the driving seat for sure and I suppose the only way he isn't going to make the playoffs is if he lost both his games I think even if he just got one draw that would mean chances are Necrophilia or the Chaps would have to win both their games it is sort of like the fly in the ointment at the moment is the Nordic Pagans because if they won their game this changes a full lot um if they didn't, then obviously it doesn't. Um, two really tough games. Two really, really tough games. And that's the only thing what worries me. Um, Jim knows how to play Undead very, very well. And they, like I said, they was doing really well. It was top of um, their Challenger vision, what had the likes of more shots, Bill Kawapara in it, uh, Thunder's Weeping Widowmakers, and Revang of the Dwarfs, Royks team. So you know what, even you know, he know he was doing really well in that in that division. So um it's not gonna be easy for Teddy Tommy in them two games. Really isn't. Um but the maximum points can get is seventeen. If they get anything close to that, they're obviously gonna make it. Blood Blood of Amber, um, they're on ten points at the moment. Maximum they get is sixteen points. Now, they've got the Wii Men. Um now you'd think against the Wii Men, this should be a home win, no problemo. But I'm just thinking is that the team what knocked him out of the playoffs? Or, or, was, be, or was a good record against uh, uh, Alma's Dark Elves? I'm going to have a look. I've got a feeling them two teams have clashed before. There you go. Yeah, 2-1. So, you know, he, you know that, that's, you know, that... 
is a concern for Alma. He, I know what Alma will be like. He says, ah, oh, well, you know, one of those things I'll make sure I get it done this time. Um, and he has beaten the Nordic Pagans as well. So obviously dwarfs uh, can do quite well like, with their, all their tackle. And obviously he uh, has a good record against elf teams, by the looks of it. So that's not a gimme um, for them. I don't think so. Um, and then they've got to play Undead But Worse the week after. What'll be really tough. Um, oof, yeah. It's not great, is it? <laughs> I, I can see uh, if they can beat the Wee Men and then draw, even get a draw against Undead But Worse will be enough. They really should beat the Wee Men. Uh, um, one team's in good form, one team's in bad form. Um, but this is Blood Bowl, isn't it? You just never know. Um, but yeah, they're on 10 points at the moment now. And Necrophilia, they're on 8 points. Maximum they can get is 14 points. they got the Nordic Pagans next up. And I really fancy them against the Pagans. I don't know why. I really fancy they can get that done. But then against Cult of Fenordlins, what won't be as easy. But again, it's another dead off, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's... Ugh. I don't know. It's it's another tricky one. Uh, when I when I looked at what games were left for a lot of these teams who could make the playoffs, none of them really was easy. Um, you just don't know how they're gonna go because obviously he's got the high powered wood elves, but the way his uh, Kaya plays, a few boots here and there could remove quite a lot of wood elves early. Um, don't think he'll be able to bully around the um, Cult of Nordlands, but then if they lost a few of their players and an undead mummy or something to the Camry, then all of a sudden you'd fancy the Necro. So it, it's really, really tricky. Um, but Hezzer knows how to play. He's a good coach, and uh, he's definitely got a chance. Now, the, the, the interesting one for me is Chaps. Um, they're on the same points as Necrofield on eight. The, 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 the maximum can get is 14 points, but you know what? Um, out of all the teams left... They're the team who could, in my opinion, get maximum points. Because against the Beastie Boys... Now, they can beat the Beastie Boys. I'm really confident they can beat the Beastie Boys. And then they've got the Nordic Pagans, who have had an up-and-down season. Um, but, again, depending on what, what sort of shape the Pagans are in after they've played another two games, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think the Chaps have definitely got a chance here to uh, make the playoffs... Um, I haven't really seen um, Mentok Man take a play. That's the only concern. So I don't really know his play style. But he did beat the Blood of Amper uh, this week 2-1. So, you know, that proves to me he can certainly get it done. And that was the only, that's the first loss for uh, the Dark Elves as well. So, I, you know, I think he could sneak in. It's go he's going to have to win probably both games to get in. But I think the Chaps can get that done. Um, like I said, the fly in the ointment is definitely the Nordic, Nordic Pagans. They're on seven points. They can get up to sixteen points, um, and they're all tricky games. I'll be honest. Cold enough for Nordlings. I can see them causing trouble for them in in, in the game to come up. Um, Necrophilia. They will be a walkover. And I think in Goblin Gambling, I actually tip Necrophilia to win that one. And then they've got Chaps who got a good time as well. I I will go on record now and say the Nordic Pagans. Although I tipped them at the beginning of the season to be in the top two, they will not make the playoffs. Now they probably will have said that. Um, I think it'll be between the top four, obviously. <laughs> um, but I I think the only. The only way the Pagans got a chance is if they win this week against Jim. But I, I, I don't know. I think that, that's three really tough games for for the uh, the Pagans to get. And they're going to probably have to win it. Probably going to have to pick up six, seven points out of them three games. I think it might be a bit too much for them. Um, look at the relegation. Um, major problems for Beastie Boys and the women. Both only got one point each. Uh, the, the joint second bottom so um, you know both these teams are in horrendous danger um, the Wii men have got Blood of Amber and Beastie Boys <laughs> Beastie Boys final week bloody hell that could be a relegation disaster um, and the Beastie Boys have Chaps and the Wii men I don't think the Beastie Boys will beat Chaps it wouldn't be the biggest shock but I don't think they'll beat Chaps the Wii men shouldn't beat Blood of Amber but he 
but he has beat them before so it wouldn't be the biggest surprise so you know I don't know that could go I mean honestly week 7 that could go down between whoever loses between the Beastie Boys and the Wee Men get relegated that would be an amazing week 7 a lot of pressure there for both them teams um, who would I pick I have no idea if I'm being brutally honest um, but which two do I think will make the playoffs now this is really really hard um, I'm going to go with Undead but West not because of um, I'm confident they'll win it or come to game playoffs but I picked them at the beginning of the season and I've got to keep with the faith um, there's a few things in his last game against the Beastie Boys where I let Ball Carry get hit a bit was unlike him but He's such a class act. He's still turning around and got the 2-1 win. Um, so I'm going to go with Teddy Tom. I don't know if he'll finish fair second, but I think he'll, he'll get there. Um, but then it comes really, really tough because... Oh, man. I really like the chaps. But they're so far. Eight points. Yeah, that game four in. You know what? I'm going to... Mentok Man Mateka, don't let me down. Cannot believe I'm, I'm I'm betraying Elmer and Hezekiah here, but I'm going to go for the Chaps. I really am. I think they'll beat the Beastie Boys, and I think if the playoff place places on the line for them, they'll beat the Pagans in Week Seven. I think, um, yeah, I, I I just yeah because I I I've just got a sneaky suspicion the Wee Men might cause blood of amber some carnage like a bit of deja vu last time they played and then even if he got past that he still got to be un undead but west teddy's team and teddy's team is pretty immense so yeah i'm gonna go with undead but west and chaps sneaking through the back door to get the second spot so let's quickly have a look at the, the teams before we wrap it up uh, necrophilia then they were it, it was sort of like a transitional season for them but at the same time I did say in the, in, the, in the precap that because he's such a good coach I still think he'll be up there and he is and he's still got a chance to make the playoffs obviously number two is his go-to guy um, he really needs number one developed um, his, his two golems are solid block and um, and guard on both and obviously number five is even better because he's got Mabel and Dodge as well his whites are just you know nothing exciting but they both have guard and tackle. So that's a hee hee on that respect. Number eight needs to, to go. <laughs> End of season. You need to bring in another white. Um, I can't get my head around number 13. Because every time I've, I, I've seen a few games of Hezekiah's games. All he does is foul. Now people will say, uh, duh. He has got dirty player. Yeah, but he's got block and agility. He's 120k piece. Oh my god. But he is a character. And obviously we do like characters in the MML. So, uh, you know, keep him. See what he does. Um, he's got kicker as well. Um, he's got ghoul with dodge. Obviously, he'll be trying to eventually probably make him to his ball carrier. So he needs to keep feeding him um, touchdowns and hopefully he survives because the last one went splat. Um, you know, it, it, he's always going to be competitive as Hezekiah because he's such a very, he's such a great coach. And he's, there's still bits and pieces here what he's good. And if he can like have a bit more look on injuries and his regen wax. Then they're gonna be, uh, they're pretty gonna be pretty nasty. And if as soon as he, and if he can get a few more skills on Blue Fair the second, then obviously they'll make it a lot better for him. And he can get some levels on the goal. Then all of a sudden this team's getting better and better. Um, and he's still got enough decent guards. Personally, I'll be very surprised. I mean, it, I suppose it goes on his cash as well. But I'll be very surprised if Ulrich the Orator doesn't get booted out and they bring in a better swanky, faster, and um, white. Uh, Cole for Nodlins then they're nice and safe they cannot get relegated because it was put up uh, through the season from the challenge um, did very well good in the challenge and again if we have a look at this team um, he's got a block mummy or so was good and a grab stand for him guard mummy on the other one he's got a nice enforcer in Vlad the Hero Helm of the Angry is pretty decent as well both got tackle um, he likes guard on his goals that's not bad uh, and they're all bludgers no wrestle though <clears throat> that's a bit of a concern but then again, if you've got guard, you'd probably put block on them. He's got mighty plug ghoul as well. So it's a bit of a funky four, this, isn't it? That's why maybe I should call him the funky four. Um, might, might have blown one. Two with two guard and an agility four. That agility four will probably end up being a ball carrier. He's got to keep him safe. He'll be okay. Um, standard um, um, zombies and skeletons. What I really like here is he's gone block, but then he's gone for fend. I think that's a beautiful 
um, skill to put on the LOS. I really do. But that's just me, innit? You know, I, I like Fend. Um, and obviously, you know, you see Brett's with peasants, the way they use the Fend, it's, it's great. Because at the end of the day, if you can sort of like use Fend, and then obviously you can just move, get your zombies up, and the only way they can hit them is rather by moving somebody else there or blitzing, that's got to be a win. Surely in in, in the uh, in the uh, the playbook of the undead. So um, I like this team. It's a bit funky with the ghouls, the funky four. That's what I'm going to call them. Um, and the whites and that. And like I say, yeah, I like this team. I think it's a, a quite a nice team. It's got loads of guard. It's got it's got movable guard as well. What can go about and go where they need. It's got two my blow tackle pieces, and it's got the big mu muscle from the mummies in in the middle. So I think this will do really well in the pros next season. And who knows, he may even bring another um, Sarnin in. Um, under, but where I said, so they are undefeated this season. 1-3, uh, drawn 2. Uh, let's have a look at them. So Isis, <laughs> interesting name for a, a, a Tomb Guardian. Um, strength 6. Um, block. <laughs> Stamp firm. Break, break tackle, yes. Get break tackle. <laughs> I was just uh, get that next. Um, but look at this, three of them have got block already, all got guard, all got mighty blow, two of them got stamp firm. This is a nightmare team. Obviously, Heretic Hez. <laughs> I wonder if he's called it that, maybe his Hez killed his last one, I don't know. Um, you know, that that's, that's uh, the only really weak link, isn't it? Um, you're always concerned about regen, uh, not regen, sorry, um, decay on these two guardians, especially to come up against Claw. But they are strength five and strength six, so with guard there, they could at least protect them and it's not going to be easy to knock these guys down um so they've got a strength four blitz route it's only usually one but just a break tackle so it's not too bad and then the blitz two <laughs> he's got tackle strip ball might blow so he's a good piece as well and then he's got service attack round this is where i might have got mistaken with geos with the strength four tomb tomb guardian it's actually um teddy has got the, the uh did i say tomb guardian sorry the strength four thrower god i'm losing it um Strength 4 and a chili 4. It's a vamp thrower. Don't see many of them. I like the choice of Fender as well. That's good. Only AV6 though. And again, was it was it Hez who got him bunked down as well? And then you got your throw done as well. He's got lead, he's got Fender, he's got jump up, he's a blodger. He's, he's a good sort of um, second string runner, isn't he? He's got two. He's got two data players again. He had one. Now he's got two again. So he likes to foul, and why not? Um, so he's got them. He's got his kick as well. So um, you know, and shattered dream skeleton at the back there as well. So you know, it, it's a good team. He's got twelve players. A lot of strength. A lot of mighty blow. A lot of killy stuff, and a lot of control. And you can see why this team's a nightmare to play against. Um, and I, yeah, I, I think they'll make the playoffs. So we had the Nosa team up pulled out. Now the Nordic Pagans, they've got three games. They need desperately to, to be the undead. Uh, let's see what's left. So they've got the uh, Strength 5 War Dancer. They've got the Chili 5 War Dancer. So again, they've got the firepower there. They've got group the treatment with block and grab. Well, grab's really good for obviously one turning. And uh, they've got two movement nine catches. Interesting what he picks on that one. Um, I would think if it's a normal, it'll probably go show feet. Unless he's using them as a, like a strip baller sort of Try and get the ball loose, then you probably go tackle or strip ball, probably tackle though. Um, no frills throw really. Four four re rolls in a what else team seems a lot. Um, and then oh Bezo Bezo that's a, that's a terrible name. Bad luck when I I always call I always call my players in a lot of my teams. I have a Bezo in them, and they never do very well. But if I don't put Bezo in them, Bezo goes bonkers. So I hope this Bezo is better for you than he used us in my teams. Uh, but again, wrestle. I like wrestle on them, and he's got a kicker as well. So I like this team at the beginning of the season. They have lost a few players, as Bud Elves do. He's still got enough firepower to make the playoffs. I just think it's three really tough games he's got to play. But if he does get to the playoffs, he'll bloody well have earned them and deserved it. Uh, Beastie Boys. The team who dare to rattle Mad Frankie Fraser's cage by saying... My guy has a medal, yours doesn't. Frizzny beard. <sighs> Big words. T was very good. Four guard. Gotta like that. Um little bull, nice piece. Two heads, blodge, strength four, strength five on the blitz. Beautiful piece. 
For instance, the beard, nice piece. Agility 4, movement 7, tackle, prehensive tail. He's already said that's his, um, his elf sort of defender. Interesting to see what he will get if he levels up. Because diving tackles are double, I do believe, on a beastman. So what is he going to pick? That will be interesting to see what he goes with there. Um, obviously, he's got his um, beastman killer here. Um, a nice agility 4. Um, and he's only two points off next level. What's he going to go there? Is he going to go with more of the ball handling route? Well, I'd be very surprised if he does. Or does he go down more of a killer route? What tackle would be suitable? Pal non's all right, but with it being agility 4, I'd probably go tackle myself. Um... Um, and obviously Cactus Juice has a level up. I hate leader on the th oh, I hate leader on warriors. Really, not many things trigger me, but that certainly does. Um, be to see what it takes. A block guards fan. Don't know what he's going to pick next though. Could go mighty blow for extra punch. Could go stand firm to try and hold the guard in peace, to hold the guard in place if he doesn't get knocked down. Um, tackle, but oh, do I see tackle? Well, say you don't see tackle on worries not much, but look at this, two of them there. Not early on, anyway, that's usually a later skill. Um, yeah. Again, this team um, are in trouble again, getting relegated. That's, that's the concern, isn't it, for these? They need to get something. And it was unfortunate they couldn't get a big win last week. 1-0 uh, up. Um, and just in the end, just couldn't get it done. Uh, they're on one point at the moment, so... Um, they've got chaps this week. If they can get something from there, that might be enough. But obviously, they'll be looking at week seven when they go against the Wee Men. But if the Wee Men beat Alma's team, then there's massive pressure on this team. Um, he's got 210k in the bank as well, so he's got enough to um, get a um, a new player if he wishes. You know, it is a decent team, and it's only going to get better. So, um, all the best for him. Um, hope he does well and as always I wish everyone the best to avoid relegation because it's not a nice thing uh, talking about relegation the Wii Men so they're obviously in there as well good old Kaiser um, look at his team always got his team's going oh Jesus so the, he's he's a bit bashed uh, the long beads bashed he's not playing this week but everything else is pretty oh god strength 2 <laughs> but again there's going to be guard around him so that'll probably help him in that respect um, gone through the wars this team Jesus um, you know alright amount of guard some again agility and, and strength there as well tackle always helps obviously um, very nice troll slayer um, it's it's not a bad team and for the TV it is I mean how many players have they got for the next game 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 yeah, so right another what 70k so they're gonna be 1650 but they are carrying 50k blow so yeah the, the, it's not a bad team it's just a bit battered isn't it that's the thing but they've still got you know what you see with runners with minus movements um yeah i mean it, it it's all right isn't it? i mean it's, it's it's got enough might of blow to get removals and obviously when he's back i mean luckily you know the way i look at this is obviously he's gutting that he's missing week six but at least he'll have one of his big guns back for week seven so that will be a massive help um it's got enough firepower it's got enough strength it's got the troll slayers it's got a a, a couple of decent runners as well um i think there's hope for this team for sure um, and regardless of if it's in the pros or in the in the challenge next season, I think uh, with another excellent transfer, this team is still going to be a force. Now here's the chaps. Now I predicted the chaps to be in the top two. I haven't even seen the team. That's the worry. So I'm feeling a bit like worried to kick this button now. But here we go. Let's see what they've got. All right. Now we'll just have to have a look at who they're playing. Because we've only got one tackle there. Let's have a look. Get onto my trusty book. So they've got the Beastie Boys and they've got the Nordic Pagans. So yeah. Oh, they've got two tackle. Number, number six, Maximilian, and number nine. Uh, they've got two uh, claw pieces there. I He's got guard on that. What's interesting. But again, it's a warrior. Warrior usually get guards. It's just the other way around, doesn't he? Instead of going block guard, they block claw. He's gone bit different 
Um, I think Tackle would be quite useful on that next, or maybe Stand Firm. Again, another leader on a Warrior. I just, oh man, I just think it's such a waste. Oh man, that, ugh, ugh. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Um, <laughs> Rupert, good old Warrior as well. So is he going to get guard next, maybe? Maybe. The only problem going this route is obviously not having Tackle, but just thinking. They're in the middle, aren't they? So when you're going against like the, the Gurners and all that, you really would expect your pest, that's where pest goes, your Beastman to take care of it. So I guess that's pretty good, to be fair. Um, Red Stag, decent ball carrier, movement seven, blood, show hands, gotta love that. Maximilian, nice, nice sort of bit of everything, isn't it? He's, he's got uh, two arms, um, block, tackle, my blood dodge, he's a bit of everything, he's like a Swiss army knife. Um, strength 4 Beastman there, um, a, a Bludge Guard piece, Peregrine who was obviously tackle wrestler can get the ball loose, Alfred needs to, oh no, I, I wouldn't say needs to be shot I guess, but obviously Agility 2 is a bit of a bummer, and then you got Boris as well, um, 170k in the bank, it's a good, good, good team, it's still got a bit to develop, but the building blocks are there for this team to be a lot better, and a lot more dangerous, um, in the coming seasons and long as he can keep most of his team healthy I think this team will do quite well um, I, I like the way it's built I just don't like leader but as people know I'm not a big fan of leader on most teams and certainly not on the KS Warrior um, but both both KS Warrior teams have leader so what do I know and finally Blood of Amber Alma forever sounds like a bit of a Bond thing that uh oh where's his players he's got an Apo now at least um well, for what he's got, is all right. I mean, he's got his four blitzers, his two witch elves. So they're the, they're the really important pieces. Three movement, eight blitzers. So they're, they're, they're rapid. Um, all of them are bludge. He's got a strength four um, blitzer in there. The only one who hasn't got an extra movement. He's got strip ball as well. Um, his witch elves are all right. Nothing special, but witch elves are witch elves. Um, and I, I, when I look at a team like this, and it's, it's all right. It's now, it's not a team I go wow over. It's all right. But when I see teams like this, and then I see like the record of the coach, it just uh, what it usually says to me is that the coach is very good. You know, because I can see a lot of coaches would struggle with this team. You know, but he hasn't. He's doing really, really well with it. Um, knowing Alma, he'll have a very tasty. Um, Dark Elves to bring in. He'll probably already have that sorted. Um, he plays Dark Elves very, very well. Um, so, he's, you know, he's, he's going to have a chance. The only concern is six, six, six Elves isn't great. Um, I mean, some people like the movement, but I don't know. I think it'd have been pretty... Oh, he's got movement set up. He's got arm seven. I was just about to say it'd been pretty cool to see three Blitzers with arm and arm. That would be quite fun, funny. Um... You know, but yeah, I'll be to see what it brings in. He likes his witch elves. Wonder if he'll bring in a, a one for this this girl. Anyway, that is that then. So, last look at the leaderboard. Then, I'm gonna go with undead, but worse. And I just got a sneaky suspicion where I'll probably fall flat on my face. But I think the chaps could sneak in and shock the so-called more obvious. Selections maybe of Alma Forever and Hezekiah and what the fuck Murray But uh, whatever happens all the best for everybody uh, Good luck to Overkill and Kaiser in their relegation battle Hope uh, you both do well and, and avoid the chop or drop whatever you want to call it uh, And good luck to Murray and Jim in their um, game I presume would be today And um, yeah um, Good luck to everyone Hope you enjoy the next two weeks and the guys who make the playoffs, good luck in them. Take care, guys. And I'll see you for your precap next season. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.